Good morning, Mountain Life. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Why don't you stand to your feet with me? Today we are focusing on joy. So God, I just ask that you come and hang out with us this morning, God. Would just your joy and your presence come and just touch every single person, Lord. Um, it is fun to follow you. It is fun to be a child of God. So would you just come and inhabit the praises of your people this morning? We just love you. We just love you, God.
Jesus, the only one who could ever see. He's worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Hey. 
to invite the prayer team up if you have anything that you'd like to lay down before the Lord today if you haven't built your home on his firm foundation or if you just have something that you need to lay down at his feet this morning I just ask that you come forward you're welcome to come forward um, and uh, partner with the prayer team also we have our prayer cards up here these are pray over every week so if you have something that you just want to write down and you want to lay down um, here at the altar, that would be fine as well. And you're also welcome to come to the altar and pray.
yesterday, today, and forever. Gonna watch my God do it again. You freed the captives, then your free hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers, then I feel your touch right now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You're the same God, you're the same God. You're the same God. Oh 
If you're a guest with us today, good morning and welcome. Uh, it's good to have you hanging out with us. For those that are online, my family will be watching this um, because they wanted to check to see how my accent had changed. Um, needless to say, my, my sister will critique everything I do. So, good morning, Annette. It's good to see you. So, um, well, it seems like I haven't been up here for a while. But uh, anyway, it's good to see you all. So we're going to be talking about uh, something that, that Joe had spoke. Oh, if, if you wasn't here last week, go online and check out Joe's, uh, Joe's sermon. It was definitely great. But I thought he was going to build me up because he was wrapping up his sermon, and I thought he was going to start hitting joy. We're going to talk about joy today. And uh, for those of you that are taking notes, it's joy beyond circumstances. Joy beyond circumstances. You know, in trying to explain joy, uh, it's one of those words that you can't explain. It's difficult. And it's frustrating because joy is one of those things you have to experience. You have to experience, and that is true joy. Uh, you can define it with words, or you can try to define it. You can try to understand it with diagrams. You know, we can study verses in the Bible, but ultimately joy cannot be explained. You have to experience joy. And my prayer for us today is that as we tackle this, as we, as we move through this, my encouragement is that, that, you, that you get this within your knower. Okay, we can use our thinker, but if it's just stuck in the thinker and it doesn't get into the heart of who we are, I believe that we miss it. So that's my prayer is that, that we wouldn't understand it with our natural thinking, but it would move from our thinking into the heart of who we are. And I want, I want us to get to this place where there would be a story that would be attached to your joy. When you hear people talk about joy, it doesn't just bring up this definition. It brings forth this emotion because there was a difference made in your life by the power of God's joy. Amen, church? Amen. Okay, I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Man, I miss that. Good morning, mate, and life. So 1 Thessalonians 5.18, this is what Paul's saying. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So no matter where you're at in your journey of life, this is a helpful verse. 
Give thanks in all circumstances. So I've got three major points that I'm going to hit. The first one, joy beyond circumstance. And circumstance, it speaks of what's happening around you. In fact, the word circumstance comes from the root word circumference. Okay, your bubble. I want you to get this idea that that you, you draw this huge circle around you, okay? And for me, I, I, I talk about, you know, people invading my bubble. But what happens is, is things that happen inside this circle, okay, defines or, or it messes with the circumstances of your life. Now, what we've learned pretty early in life is that what happens inside this circumference, inside this bubble, is largely out of our control. See, we like to think that we have some control over a lot of things that happen in life, but there's so much that we don't have control over. So many decisions we can't make. There's things that move inside of this bubble that we don't choose. And I want us to think about that because Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances. See, and this is difficult to do because most of us, we have this, this idea within our heads. We have this idea or this reason that we don't give thanks because of circumstances. And for our, if our circumstances were different, then we'd be able to give thanks. There would be this joy. That would be this joy. Are you tracking? You see, we think the problem is our circumstance. So we think the reason why I'm angry is because of the circumstances around me. The reason why I'm disappointed, the reason why I'm discouraged is because of that which has happened around me. I wouldn't be frustrated. I wouldn't be irritated. I wouldn't be depressed if my circumstances were different. Okay, I, I look around the room. There's a few of you that are tracking on this. You see, my circumstances shouldn't dictate who I am. Shouldn't di dictate who we are. See, we create this, this if-then. So for some of you, you probably don't know this. I went to school for computer engineering. And in programming, there's this, there's this if, if a certain thing happens, then this has to take place. See, so we create this equation where it's if then with our circumstances. And we say things like this. Well, if. If this changed, then there would be a different side to who I am. There would be a difference in me. If I got promoted at work, if I could meet the right person, if my husband would make an effort Wow, that was quiet. <laughs> if my wife would somehow show some interest, if my neighbor would move, <laughs> if my health were better, if the parking lot were closer, if my parents would stop fighting, if my boss would be nicer, if my coworker would be kinder, if my children would be more obedient, if my house were bigger, if my car were newer, here's one for us. If winter was warmer. <laughs> you see, we, hold, we, we all struggle with these things. We have these things that go on. If, if this would change, then I would be a different kind of person. If my circumstance would change, then I would have more joy. This is what they refer to as the happiness illusion. I love that phrase, the happiness illusion. We spend much of our lives thinking about happiness, and that is going to determine how we live life. What happens with my circumstances in my bubble? That's going to change who I am. You see, I want you to write these two things down because this is something I want you to think about. Happiness is external. Joy is internal. 
Happiness is external. Joy is internal. You see, Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances. But this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If our circumstance determines our thanksgiving, how is it that Paul could say, give thanks in all circumstances? How is it he can do this? You know, if you, if you read about Paul in the Bible, how is it that he had this joy? You know, maybe he didn't experience trials in life. You know, maybe for some reason, you know, he had this mindset. Have you ever been around somebody that, that has everything? You know, there's times they have a different outlook on life. They live a life of luxury. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, this, this, this verse makes total sense. Take away their bank account and then ask them how their joy is. You see, this wasn't the case with Paul. You know, if you look in 2 Corinthians 11, and this is verse 24 through 27, Paul comes up with this list of circumstances that happened in his life. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones, three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have constantly been on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from fellow Jews, danger from Gentiles, danger in city, danger in country, danger at sea. In danger from false believers. So pretty much everywhere that Paul went, his circumstances were a little upside down. Everyone, everywhere had it in for Paul. So I think if somebody can talk about circumstances in life and still have joy, I think Paul fits that bill. Amen, church? Amen. And verse 27 says this, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have, I have known hunger and thirst and I've gone without food. I have been cold and naked. You see, this is, this is quite the resume when you're talking about somebody's circumstance. You know, if that was me, I guarantee I'd be wrestling with God and I'd have a few things to say. You see, but... But Paul had, had come to this place where he realized that, that these external things that are happening in my life should have no place in removing the joy that the Lord has put in my heart. You see, he had all these things coming into his bubble. It was pretty difficult, but yet he said, I will give thanks in all circumstances. You know, maybe, maybe Paul was one of these annoying optimistic people you know if you've been in church long enough you'll meet those people that have you know the positive thinking you know if you tell yourself a lie enough times you'll eventually believe it you see but that wasn't the case with Paul you see he had a different kind of thinking pastor Tim Fulton said this joy is more about how we think than how we feel Joy is more about how we think than how we feel. See, this is God's kind of joy. It's greater than our circumstance. And this is what I want to encourage us with today. It's walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, allowing you to look at whatever circumstance happens in life and know that you can pull from the Holy Spirit, and you can still have joy in every circumstance that happens. I want that kind of joy. There's times I've been in it, but I'll be honest, I'm human. There's times I fall out of it. See, joy is not merely a belief, okay? It, it, it has to be a part of who we are. You have to embrace it. Yes, I can believe it, but then it has to move on from, from this confession with my mouth to the inner man in who I am. 
It has to be this deep sense, this well-being, this delight that comes from the Lord. It's a fruit of the Spirit. How many of you have the Spirit residing in you? Okay, one of those fruits that you have to have on the inside is the joy that will transform your life. It is joy that will transform you and I. Not just any joy, it's a deep, long-lasting joy that comes from a relationship with Christ. That's my thing today, is what are you plugging into? You see, because if I'm plugging into everything that's going on around me, and right now it's pretty jacked up, if that's what I'm basing my joy on, man, I have got zero joy. The tank is empty. But if, I'm, if I am plugged in to the promises, to everything that God said, not just this, 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 temporary, this, this temporary feeling, but being rooted in the presence and the life-giving force of Jesus Christ, I can have this joy. Nehemiah 8, 10 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Think about that for a moment. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, I can't do anything in my own steam. But yet, if I tap in to the Holy Spirit, if I tap into what Jesus has laid down for you and I, then my strength comes from Him. How did David, we sung about this earlier, how did David overcome Goliath? wasn't out of his strength, wasn't out of his might, but it was the Holy Spirit working in and through him to overcome his giant. Joy isn't this do good, whatever you want to call it, label that we just slap on. I'm a Christian, I got joy. You know, it's not like, and I'm not talking out against anybody, it's not like just putting your cross on, you know? You have your chain, you put your cross on. No, joy is something different. It's the source of our strength. It is that thing that we tap into. It, it empowers us. It lifts us. It sustains us. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's the stamp that you and I should have because of our relationship with God. Number two. And you just have to go with my, my speaking. The source of your joy. Because for some reason, I have this Boston accent just saying, source. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. So Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Our joy needs to be rooted in Christ, not rooted in our circumstance. Your joy needs to be rooted in Christ. You see, the world is always going to try to sell us this counterfeit joy. And it's all based on everything that's happened around you. It doesn't last. You know, there's, there's pleasure for a moment, but it's going to fade away. There's happiness for a moment, but it's going to fade away. But joy comes from God, and it's internal. It's unshakable because it's anchored in God, and God does not change. Amen. High five, brother. Think about David. David. Okay, I, I love reading stories about David because David is a guy that you can relate to because, man, he goofed up. He goofed up big time. But you see, David realized when he was going through trials and persecution, he found joy in the Lord. Psalm 1611 says this, You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence. 
granting me the joy of your presence. See, David knew that for him to walk through life, for him to do it, he had to connect with the source. The source. The source. Yeah, man. To cultivate this joy, you have to stay connected. You have to stay connected to God. You have to. There is no other way. There is no other way. As we draw near to God, he fills us with a joy that overflows regardless of circumstances. This is the kind of God we serve. And let me be real. Okay, can I just be me? Okay, joy's not found in circumstances, but in a relationship with Christ. And too often, we search in the wrong places for joy. You see, we try to find it in somebody else. Or we try to find it in, in possessions, in achievements. I'll say this. We try to find it in social media. Or we try to find it in binge-watching Netflix. True joy comes from knowing and experiencing the love and grace of God. He wants you to have joy in your life. That's your strength. His word says that. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you're feeling weak today, maybe you need a little fill-up of some joy. And that's what I'm praying that we get. John 15, 11, Jesus tells us, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Notice Jesus, notice that Jesus speaks of his joy being in us, making our joy complete. You see, you and I have to be connected to Jesus. That's the only way that we're going to get this. Happiness is external. Joy is internal. If you want that internal indwelling in you, you have to be connected to the source. Source. Man, you better change that word. <laughs> I cracked myself up. This means spending time in his presence, meditating on the word, spending time in worship, spending time in prayer, spending time around people that, that can actually pour into you and build you up. You see, we do this, we, we, we discover this unshakable, undeniable joy that you and I can have. And the crazy thing is, there's so much that God offers you and I that are, that are right there for the taking, and yet, for some reason, we, just, we hold back. And this is what I believe God's saying today is, is, my joy's here. You've just got to tap into it. You've got to tap into it. Joy gives us strength to endure. It's not this, I'm just going to move on from that. There's a few things I want to say. Paul and Silas. Okay, if you look at Acts chapter 16, I mean, they're beaten, they're thrown into prison, and yet, what do they do? I mean, here you are. If somebody, okay, I'm going to edit this piece out, but. I was, I was going through customs, okay, and for those of you that don't know, I'm a green card holder, okay, but I am going to become a citizen because I don't want to deal with this anymore, but uh, so I go through customs, and they've, they've got me there, and they're pulling everything, I was just like, what's going on, so they got my passport, they got my green card, they asked for my driver's license. Next thing I know, they asked for my phone. When they asked for my phone, I was like, this isn't good. 
So I end up, they send out another guard. Guard comes, gets me, you know, takes me in the back. And I'm sat there thinking, wow, what is going on? I mean, everything's good. And yet I was getting bent out of shape. And there was no joy. In fact, there was a whole lot of speaking in tongues. <laughs> because I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and it was just because of something that happened years ago. My little green card is forever flagged in their system. So anyway, the guy said the only way out of this is to become a citizen. So, <laughs> anyway, I tell you that story because it, it makes me think of, of Paul and Silas. Here they are, beaten, thrown into jail, and yet... They, they are still in this place of joy. They are singing hymns. They're praying. And if you read the story, they have, they have a jailbreak. I mean, as an earthquake, doors fly open, and these guys are, are happy. And it's not because of the external circumstances going on in their life. It's this internal joy that they have because they've pushed into the Holy Spirit and there's something taking place in them that supersedes everything around them. And the great thing about this is because of their joy, the jailer in his household gets salvation. You see, that's the power that you and I have within us. When somebody sees the joy that you're carrying, they're drawn to it, they want that. What is it you guys got? Because I don't have it and I want what you've got. You see in this jailer, he's just going about doing his job, doing his business. But he sees two people in here. The circumstances say that you should be in the corner crying your eyes out. Because you've been beaten and you've been locked up. But yet here they are with the joy of the Lord just flowing out. It became a testimony to those around them. That regardless of circumstances, regardless of hardship, I have the joy of the Lord working in me. And that is the power that will transform lives because it's Christ in you. Christ in you. Number three, the impact of our joy. You and I, we need to express the joy that we have in the Lord. I think so many times the enemy comes in and he tries to beat us down and he tries to rob us of that joy. There's a world outside of these four walls that need to know that Christ is alive and well and he's living in you and I. And that joy that you and I have, they can have it too. You see, it shouldn't be this thing that we just hold within us. It should be that which overflows out of us. It's this contagious thing, man. I, I want some of that. You've been around some of those people. Man, they'll pray to paint. Where, where's D? Oh, she's out there. Man, I just, I get around her and she starts praying. I'm just like, yeah, come on. I, I want some of that. You know, Cole. I, I love it when Cole gets fired up and he starts praying. I'm like, yes. This is, this is how we build each other. Man, I want to see somebody on fire for the Lord. And it's like, yeah, you know, I want that. You know, for those of you that were fire bugs, there's something about fire. It's like, oh, you just want to touch it. Oh, let's chuck some more gas on that. Woof. Like, come on. We should be that fire that the Holy Spirit's pouring more gas on. Because there's a world that needs to see you on fire for the Lord. Well, that was good. It wasn't even in my notes. So Paul goes on to say, Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God which will surpass all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. 
You see, Paul, Paul's connecting these dots, if you will, rejoicing with gentleness and peace. See, when we're, when we're filled with this joy, there should be something that takes place. It affects those people that are around us. We become gentler. I'll, I'll, I'll get that later. Our joy affects people around us. It's contagious. Here's who we need to be. I wasn't going to say this, but I put it in there with a little note, maybe. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. I love this piece of scripture, and this is from the New Living Translation. It says, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. You see, our joy should be this beacon. It should be this light in the darkness that Christ has put us in. You see, there's a lot of things going wrong, and I believe there's a lot of people outside of this building that are looking. They are searching, and it's going to be that light that the Holy Spirit is ignited in you that they will see. They will see that because right now they're in darkness, and they need this light. And as you have that connection there's going to be this joy that they see in you because it's just going to overflow. That's how you and I are designed. When we're, when we're connected, when we're forged and pushing and, and striving for that which Christ has given us, there's an overflow that will take in our lives. There's this overflow that will happen, and, and it's, it's one of those things people around you, they can't, Oh, I can't see that. No, they're going to see it. They're going to see it just the same way as if we walk through life bent out of shape because of our circumstances. Well, that was garbage. Where are you at, God? People are going to look and think, why do I want that? Why do I want that? No, you and I have to be Christ-like. Less of me and more of him. Less of me and more of him. You know, there's times that I, and I'll be honest with you, I've been, I was telling Joe last week, it's like, man, I, dude, I'm so disconnected. You know, I went to England two weeks, never picked up my Bible. You know, I'm around just, man, I'm just around stuff. And it's like, God's there talking to me. I'm just not listening. You know, and I felt so disconnected. Yet, my sister will correct me on this. <laughs> I don't think my sister and my brother and myself have been in the same room for probably 40 years. I watched God do something with my sister and my brother. And I'm just like, even when I stepped back, God stepped forward. You see, because it had nothing to do with me and everything to do with him. When my flame was but a flicker, the Holy Spirit's like, I've got you. I've got you. You see, and this is the joy that I should have been walking in, but it took that for me to see. Man, God's alive and well. God's alive and well because God is in the business of relationship. He wants you and I to be so connected with him that all the circumstances around us 
doesn't matter. We don't have Ryan come up. You see, we have these opportunities to impact others with our joy. What's God speaking to you today? What's God speaking to you? Is it, is it a case that, that he's asking you, man, you you got you to gotta press in. you got to press in. You know, you've spent the last few weeks sort of sitting back on the bench. That isn't who I called you to be. I called you to be a starter in the lineup up. And I'm not a baseball player, but man, for the Lord, I'll bat it out of the park every time. Every time. You see, regardless of what you and I are going through, that's on the outside. Joy is internal. And I encourage you today that if you're struggling, there is a joy that can be found in the person of Jesus Christ that will surpass all your understanding. You think that things are going wrong in your life? Let me tell you what, you grab a hold of the Lord and he'll, he'll help you see the path that you should be on. True joy is found in the relationship with Jesus. Spend time in his presence. Meditate on his word. Trust his promise. Let joy be expressed in your gratitude. Serve in others. Have this gentle spirit moving in and through you. Recognize the power that your joy has to impact others. You see, here's the thing. God doesn't give you and I all these benefits just to hoard it. You see, that's our, that's our mentality. Is he who has the most toys wins? No. Because here's what. You could walk out that door, get struck by lightning, and where's all your toys? All your toys are left behind. He who has Jesus Christ wins. You will never fail if you take the hand of Christ and you walk through life with him. This is the hope. This is the joy. This is what brings salvation to others is they will see that joy moving in and through your life. And when mud hits the fan and you're just walking in joy, because your circumstances are not going to change your thinking, they're going to look and be like, wow. Man, I, I remember when this happened to me and I, I couldn't keep it together. Yet here you are, this, this person, everything's, everything's going down the, down, the, down the toilet and yet they're keeping it together. Why are they keeping it together? You see, and that speaks to people there's people watching you and I to see how we do life with Christ because they're looking. They're looking because they're craving that which is empty within them. And the only thing that can fill it is the Holy Spirit and His joy. That should be the spirit that we walk in. That should be one of the fruits that we pour out. We need the joy of Christ in our lives. I'm going to have you stand. You know, you may be in this room today and it's like, I want some of this. You know, I think there's times in church that we make things so complicated. Simple, confess with your mouth, believe in your knower, in your heart. That Jesus wants to do life with you. We're going to have our prayer team. They're going to be up here at the front. And here's the thing. I, I sense this in the room. That there's people here today that's like, man... My joy tank is on an empty. 
But the thing is, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives. God gives more than you and I could ever receive. And if you're in this place today, I want to encourage you to come up and just receive prayer. Because I believe that if you press into him, he is faithful to press into you. He will meet you where you're at. But there's things that have to take place in the physical. See, for me to understand, for me to reach out, there's, there's something I have to do. And it's as simple as God. You know, I goofed up and I take that step forward and God's like, man, I'm meeting you right there. I'm meeting you right there. Don't complicate it. Don't let the enemy tell you, well, you got to... You gotta jump over that chair, you gotta do a cartwheel, you gotta do a backflip, and then by the time you get down here, you gotta kneel down and you've gotta say whatever you gotta say. No. God's just saying, step forward. Step forward. You see, I feel that there's times that we we miss it because the Holy Spirit is just, man, just come and get prayer. And then we look around the room and we're frightened to do, we're frightened to step out because, well, what if somebody sees me going to get prayer and I think that I'm damaged? Here's the thing, we're all damaged. We are all damaged. I've come to this realization, I don't care what people think. I care what he thinks. I care what he thinks. And if he tells me to come up 20 times, I'm going to come up 20 times. If he tells me to fall on my face in front of everybody, I'm going to fall on my face. I don't have it together, but he does. So, Father, as we, as we just wrap up this service, Lord, I just pray for your Holy Spirit right now just to move through this house. Lord, I pray that hearts, Lord, would just be open. And Lord, that the spiritual ears would hear what the Spirit's saying. And Lord, I believe that you're telling people today that there is hope, there is joy, there is grace, there is love. Lord, you want to, de you want to deposit all of that into each one of us. So Lord, I pray that nobody would leave this place the same way that they came in. But Lord, they would just embrace, they would, I'm just going to ask all of you, I just want you to take one step to the side or one step forward. Because I believe if we do something, if, if you're saying I'm going to step forward into you, God, I believe that there's something that's going to take place today. There's something that the enemy doesn't want to happen in this house today. So I want you to take that step. I want you to push into him. Because I believe the Holy Spirit today is saying, now is the time. I'm going to break off those chains. That which the enemy has tried to rob from you, I am going to replace it tenfold. You want joy in your heart, I'm going to deposit joy in your heart today. You want to receive grace, my grace is sufficient. You want more of my love flowing in and through your life, I will deposit that into you today. We have not because we ask not. So Lord, I'm asking for more of you. And Lord, for everybody in this room, that which they need, Lord, I pray that you would deposit that within their inner man, within their knower. Lord, that it wouldn't be just head knowledge, but Lord, it would be a heart change. Lord, that when they leave this place, there will be something new that takes place. The old man is put under and the new man comes forth. Lord, I pray that there is a newness and a wholeness on people's lives today. Lord, I pray that they would be so contagious that their hearts would be on fire. Lord, that they would leave this place knowing all things are possible because Christ is in me. Christ is in me. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we get the privilege of, of being here as a family and we get to celebrate who you, who you are. Lord, I'm crying out for more of you. More of you and less of me. 
And Lord, there's hearts in this room that are crying out, more of you, less of me. So Lord, I pray that you just fill up your people. You are, you are a God that blesses his family. So Lord, I, I speak blessings over everybody here today. Lord, that they would, they would leave this place knowing that they've been in your presence. Moses' face was changed because he was in your presence. Lord, his whole countenance changed because he was in your presence. Lord, I pray that we would change because we're in your presence. Lord, turn our lives right side up. Lord, I pray that there's a renewing in each one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody said, Amen. Amen.